a range to shoot on. <laughs> and we are here, Coleman's Creek Training Center. It used to only be open to military and law enforcement. All right, guys, so we are out here at Coleman's Creek Training Facility for the second annual Coleman's Creek Sniper Match. So Matt, you've never been here before. No, never been to Coleman's Creek. Yeah, so we <laughs> just all. got the camper set up. What we've got is we've got sight in. All right, so we looked at the squad list. There are 39 teams. Yeah, 39. Mm -hmm. And there are some heavy hitters, yeah. like heavy, heavy hitters. Guys, this is mostly uh, military teams um, from the best of the best. And we're going to have our work cut out for us. <laughs> where, where do you think we can finish? In the top 10, hopefully? That would be nice. Um, top 10 I, would be a really tough stretch here. Guys, this is no joke. Um, this is a tough place to shoot. And with the names that I saw on the list, it's, it's going to be tough. Yeah, <laughs> it will be. I mean, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, so we've got the camper set up. We're going to go zero here in about uh, an hour. And they've got a 100-yard zero set up. We'll go through all of our equipment, what we're using and then hopefully bring you some really good information. I got a bunch of products I'm gonna kind of review um, during this segment of the match series. And then I will also, I'm getting ready to break 70,000 subscribers, so I will be giving away a nice Microtech, like an Ultratech. So be listening for clues, because one of the questions to win that will be a clue here in the video. We got Matt over here with the gas gun. We'll go over what he's shooting and what equipment. And we'll go over some of my equipment and also some other stuff we've got new for this match. All right, so now Matt is getting the Wiser Precision set up with the Magneto Speed. This will enable us to be able to get real-time data and real zeros for velocity at the location we're at. So what he did was he just slid the bipod back, he put it on the ARCA adapter, and then what we'll be able to do is adjust this so that it will not affect the harmonics and we can get an exact bullet speed. I'm that. running the R6 can by KG Made on the Accuracy International ATX. I'll be shooting this in six millimeter Creedmoor and let's go over some of the things we have. So here. I get a ton of emails about stuff that I'm running and everything. And what I wanna do is I wanna give a shout out to a company called ISC. It's owned by Seth, he's the inventor. Uh, he did this for work uh, overseas and wanted to come up with something that was better than flip caps. Now guys, this is not inexpensive. This is an expensive option. But what it is, is right here guys, if you can see this, this works just like an iris. And what you can do is close out the light. These are weather resistant. They work in the desert, work in the sand. This has an adapter on it. This is on the Tangent Theta, the Professional Marksman series. To get a set of these front and rear, you're probably looking at about $700, so it is not cheap, okay? A lot of guys might just opt to use them in the rear. Uh, they do have slip-on boots, but he also has direct thread. They also come with Tenebrex and a flash covers. You can take those off. They also have clear lenses as well. So the action's open. I'm gonna let you guys see right in here for the objective, same thing. All I have to do is rotate this and see how we're protecting that glass. And we can also use that to minimize the amount of light that's coming in. I also get a lot of questions about this uh, silly koozie right here. And I did cover this in one channel. A lot of you guys might think it's kooky or whatever, uh, but I don't run a sunshade because if you're running something that's a forward clip on, you've got that flip up that's always in the way. So this takes care of that using the ISC scope caps. You can always go online and order directly from him. He does give LEO and military discounts. And there are some packages that are only available for military. But as far as the Surefire, the koozie here, if I needed a sun shade, I do have the ability to be able to move this forwards and at least give me some type of rudimentary sun shade. And you guys might say, well, that's kooky. Well, the thing is, it's there if I need it. It also helps protect this objective bell uh, going in and out of objects. This is also the Wilcox Raptor. You guys have seen this before. I'm only gonna use this for laser range finding, um, just for unknown distances. If I see a target, all I've got to do is press this button here and it will give me an instant reading on the distances. As far as the Tangent Theta, I'm going to save that for another review, but we're going to talk about all the products and things that we're using. This is, of course, on a spur mount with an LRA level. This is the LRA MV3 with the spur mount, the perch, and you can see for level or not level. The Raptor will also do that as well, but I don't have to focus in on this one. It's just there if I need it. 
So what we're going to do is head over to the Zero Range. We're going to talk about some other cool equipment that we're using for this match. We'll go over what match shooting. So stay tuned. All right, since we're out here and we're just goofing off because we're still waiting on the zero time, I'm going to go over a question I get a lot about my watch. Um, I get a ton of emails about what kind of watch I'm running. And guys, this is the Garmin. Uh, this is the Delta. Now, I've been running the Garmin um, Phoenix watches even before. This is like in 2014 is when I started wearing these. And it's had a couple of different iterations. This is the latest one with applied ballistics. And so this is really nice. So what I've got is, and these run about $1,600, but if I press this, this is the applied ballistics profile. You see that? And so now I can just choose applied ballistics. I'm trying to do this backwards. And what I can do is, let me go ahead and set this up so you guys can see. You guys see quick edit? And I'm trying to do this upside down, so I'm hoping I can do this correctly. Um, if I go down into this menu, you'll see range card, target card, environment, target. You can directly link this to your SIG Kilo, the 3000 BDXs or the Vortex. But one of the nice things about it, I mean, as soon as you hit the laser range finding on the distance, if it's 500 yards, it'll show you what the hold is on it. Now I don't have these paired up because I'm not gonna use it for that application. But what's nice on this is if I go here to range card and I choose range card, let me go ahead and choose that. Oh, trying to do it backwards. Bear with me, range card. Okay, so guys, there's my range card. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but all of these numbers for my distances line up perfectly with my Kestrel. So I will be able to tell at an instant what those holds are. And you can adjust the step or the increment on it. It does have a slight delay, but it's very, very beneficial. Um, I like having it. It does work out really well, depending on what you're using it for. And you can see some of the data there. And then this right here, I've had a lot of questions about this. This is actually my second one. And yes, this is made in China. It's made by a company called Mech Army. It charges off of a USB-C, but this thing is insanely bright. Um, you would be amazed. And I always carry a Surefire flashlight with me, um, but if I need something at night and it's on my wrist, it's just three taps and it is crazy bright. It's about 200 or so lumens. You can also turn it down, but you don't even know it's there. And so that's what I use in regards to the watch. It's the Garmin Fiend, uh, Delta with applied ballistics. So that helps out quite a bit. The other thing is, is make sure if you've got inclement weather that you've got wax pencils because a marker is not going to work on a white card. And a white card is very, very important to have, especially when you're doing layouts and whatnot. But as far as the ammunition that I'm going to be shooting, I am shooting hand loads for this match. These are the six Creed Moore, the 115, the DTAX, the David Tubbs, and I'm shooting Lapua Brass small primer. So we'll see what it does. It slings at about 3,000 feet a second or so. And let's go ahead and get this 100 yard zero done. And then we'll come back at you with some other goodies that you might like. So stay tuned. Now for this match here, Matt is going to be running a set of Leica binos. Uh, these are laser range finding, but that gives us both the ability to laser range find independently. Mm -hmm. And then you'll also be carrying a spotter as well. Yep, the Leopold Mark IV. Now why would we want to carry a spotter? <sighs> Probably on the longer range targets. Um, if we get a chance to shoot out, what are we shooting, 1300? Yeah, I think originally it was 1700 and they pulled it back some. Get a good wing call and see splash for that one. Yeah, the sure. other thing, guys, it gives us a reticle where none of the other range finders give you a reticle. And yes, I am aware that the Vortex Furies have a reticle, but they're only half mil holds. If I can break that down and be able to give him a call if we have time to set up on a really, really long range, uh, that's why we're going to also carry the spotting scope as well. I typically don't carry a spotting scope in a match like this, but I think it'll be beneficial for this one. Yeah. So we were working on communication skills, and Matt said, hey, let me walk you in on this big squirrel over here. So go check this out. Might have found dinner. So he's out there somewhere, and Matt was able to walk me straight into this puppy right here. And let's see if I can get it zoomed in. One of them weird ones. This is one of them squirrels that uh, looks like a raccoon. You see him over there? He's just over there eating some nuts. These nuts! See him? He's got a little band on his face. We don't have those back at home. We have white squirrels, solid white, not albino either. Zero range.
All right, so zeroing was not eventful. Everything was where it should have been, and we checked it with magneto speed, got our velocities, everything was good. Guys, one of the biggest questions I get is what kind of ear protection are you using? And I go through a ton of different ears, uh, but I've been using a set since Memorial 3-Gun, and it is by far the best electronic ears I've ever used. Keep in mind, they are not for listening to music. They are for noise protection, for noise canceling, and then also amplifying. And those are the autos. And this is a really small, like a hard case. And these are called the noise barriers. And what's really nice about it is when you open these up, this is your charging dock. Okay, you guys see how that just lit up right there? And it shows there at 100%. You can also see that the battery storage on the actual unit itself is at 70%. I have not charged these since I initially purchased them. So basically these just lift out of here. They are very, very small and they do offer amplification. You just press the button right there and then what you will hear is a single tone knowing that you turned them on and then you can press it again. Now I will tell you in the high setting, they are actually a little too much. You get a little bit too much feedback. Uh, they have a couple of different inserts for foam and then also the silicone type. You also have some tools there for cleaning the ear canal and all of that, not your ears, but the actual ear canals on these. These are by far the best I've ever used. What it will do is it will now take a sample and it will show that at 100%. It will in just a second because I just pulled it out of there. And then what it will do is it will, this is your base station. So you can kind of see everything that's on there. Price point of these is going to run right at $400 and auto does a great job with them. I can't tell you how comfortable they are. You don't even know that you wear them. Uh, I've worn them 14 hours straight without having to have a recharge. So there's that rechargeable function where you do have to plan on downtime during the evening or whatnot, um, but just put them in the charge pack and they're good to go for the next day. So what we're going to do is we're going to get settled in. We will talk about some stuff inside of the camper here, getting ready for tonight and tomorrow, getting our data cards, getting it all set up, and we'll see what happens. Guys, there are some huge heavy hitters here, to say the least. There's 39 teams. We are team 23. Hopefully we can finish in the top 39. This is preparing. <laughs> so what all are you doing over here, Matt? Loading some magazines, some pistol mags. So loading pistol mags. Got some rifle mags loaded. Just trying to think of what all we might need for tomorrow. Tighten down all the, tighten down all the gear for tomorrow. Just sitting and taking it easy. All right, so we have all of our gear loaded up and now it's time to do drop tables. So basically, my drop table looks something like this. And I'll start off pretty broad in the beginning. Um, so maybe 50 yard increments, but then I'll start stepping it down to 25 and then 20 because of those further distances, let's say at 980 yards, I have a little more resolution on my numbers. Um, I'll also do wind holds for five miles an hour. Remember wind is a constant, so it'd be double that if it was a 10 mile an hour. Um, so if I know if I have a full value wind, I can at least use this as a reference to see what that minimum hold would be. So I'm going to put that in the data card holder. We're going to do this in duplicate so that Matt will have mine, I'll have his. It's a pain in the butt to do these. You can do it on a printer if you like. Another good thing is if you get bad weather, you want to go ahead and tape these up too. So just use some like clear tape and that'll at least keep the uh, ink from smearing. So that's what we're doing now. And then what I'll probably do is do a quick, like a 50 yard one on this one, just so I have it on the rifle. And uh, that's it. What do you, uh, what do you think about all that? Getting it done. <laughs> get her done. Well, we got plenty of time. We got here early. It's only five o'clock. So we got everything settled in, all of our gear sorted. And uh, we'll come at you in the morning. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And guys, this video is dedicated to my sniper friends in South Korea. Park, you know who you are. And I appreciate you watching the channel. And thanks for all the good uh, information back and forth. Um, I hope you guys have some great luck. Maybe we'll see you at SHOT Show this year. So we'll see you tomorrow morning. Sleep well, guys.